Hi guys, today we are going to be discussing chapter 8, Recombinant DNA Technology. I am sure that after all this while, we are all pretty confident and pretty familiar with the concept of central dogma of molecular biology, whereby DNA will undergo transcription to produce mRNA and mRNA will be translated by ribosome to form proteins. All right, so as long as we have the DNA, okay, as long as we have the genetic code, Okay, so we we'll we will have no problem to produce that protein. This squid is able to glow in the dark. Okay, so why can the squid glow in the dark? This is because the squid contain a gene, okay, DNA that codes for fluorescent protein. All right, so that's why the squid able to glow in the dark. So now take for example, okay, so we take the gene that code for fluorescent protein from the squid and we transfer that gene into, let's say, a cat. Now the cat have the instruction or the information to produce fluorescent protein, all right? So it is not impossible to get a glow-in-the-dark cat, okay? Although there are a lot of ethical issues that comes along with it, that is to be debated in, um, in different time, okay? So as you can see, anything is possible with genetic engineering, okay? Uh, this salmon, okay, both of these salmon are actually uh, Atlantic salmon, okay? But this small one is a naturally occurring one, okay? And the big one is Atlantic salmon that has already been genetically modified, okay? So this big one um, contain, at the point, carry a gene for growth hormone, okay, from Chinook salmon. Okay, so Chinook salmon is naturally a lot bigger compared to Atlantic salmon, so that's why scientists has transferred the gene of growth hormone, okay, from Chinook salmon into this Atlantic salmon, okay, making the Atlantic salmon to be able to grow a lot bigger than the naturally occurring uh, Atlantic salmon, okay? All right, so I'll be uh, nampak, dia boleh seko boleh makan satu dua orang, okay? Now after being genetically modified, seko boleh makan tiga empat lima orang lah, okay? Uh, so genetic engineering can be beneficial to us human beings, okay? So another example uh, uh, of application of genetic engineering adalah, now you have E. coli, okay? So you put gene of insulin from human into E. coli, so now you get E. coli that are able to produce insulin. So what do you do? Awak ternak saja E. coli tersebut, okay, because E. coli very, very cheap to culture, okay. Uh, so apa yang awak buat adalah, awak culture dia, kemudian awak kutip saja insulin yang dia produce, and then awak jual insulin tersebut. Alright. So what are the tools that you will be needing in order for you to perform recombinant DNA technology? So the first one must be gene of interest. Okay, so what is a gene of interest? Okay, for example, like this one, we want our cat to glow in the dark. So we take gene that code for fluorescent protein, okay, from our squid, okay, and transfer it to the cat. So now the gene that codes for fluorescent protein is or becomes our gene of interest. Okay, so let's say another example, we want um, our E. coli to be able to produce insulin. Okay, so the gene of insulin now becomes our gene of interest. Okay, now bear in mind, our gene of interest is located in a chromosome. Okay, so what do we do is we have to take the gene of interest out from the chromosome. So we have to cut it out from the chromosome okay so we need to have another tool to be able to perform this okay so this second tool is called as restriction enzyme so we want to take out we want to, to cut our gene of interest out from the original chromosome that it comes from okay so restriction enzyme is enzyme that recognizes a specific dna sequence and cut it there okay so the sequence that the uh, restriction enzyme recognize kita panggil sebagai restriction site okay so dia akan kenal specific sequence and then dia akan potong kat situ okay so tempat dia potong tu kita panggil sebagai restriction site okay all right now kalau anda tahu a uh, restriction enzyme uh, can be naturally found dekat dalam bacteria okay so that's why this picture comes in handy so ini adalah punya bacteria awak okay so tengok bacteria ni dia punya uh, pest dia punya pest pula dia punya 
uh, apa ah uh, bakteria ni akan dikacau oleh virus ni lah okey ah uh, ini dia punya pest lah kira nilah ha okey so ini ada punya pest okey um, so dia akan dikacau oleh virus tersebut virus akan masukkan DNA virus okey kemudian menyebabkan apa dia bakteria ni uh, tertipu okey sebab so, bakteria ni tertipu Okay, so bakteria tersebut akan gunakan virus punya DNA ini untuk menghasilkan lagi banyak virus. Lalas bakteria tersebut pecah, mati, keluarkan lagi banyak virus. So virus itu nolah membiak. Okay, tetapi yang merananya siapa? Yang merananya lah orang punya bakteria tersebut. Okay, so bakteria has evolved a strategy to protect themselves from being infected by orang punya virus ni lah. So jadi apa yang dibuat adalah Uh, sebab tu dia ada restriction enzyme tadi. Okay, so restriction enzyme ni sebenarnya ada dekat dalam bakteria disebabkan untuk kalau ada ada je DNA yang terkutuk kanting masuk, dia akan pun potong. Restriction enzyme tu akan pun akan potong. Restriction enzyme tu dia akan kenal specific sequence. Okay, disebabkan oleh awak punya virus ni, dia ada unique sequence. Okay, uh, nampak je GAA, TTC, uh, itu mesti virus lah tu. Okay, nampak je DGG, CCC, uh, virus lah tu. Okay, ha, so dia akan potong. Okay, ha, so itu kerja apa ni resistor enzim sebenarnya. Okay, ha, untuk potong ha, DNA virus ni, untuk protect apa punya bakteria, ha, untuk protect apa punya bakteria ni daripada dijangkiti oleh virus. Tetapi, apa punya resistor enzim tersebut sangat berguna untuk kita, okay, ketika dalam genetic engineering. Okay, ha, so very very good lah. Okay, so kita ada dua contoh of uh, restriction enzyme. So kita ada contoh yang pertama adalah ikut R1. Contoh yang kedua adalah SMA1. Nama pun enzyme, so dia akan kenali sequence yang berbeza. Okay, so kalau ikut R1, dia akan kenali 5-3 GAATTC. Tetapi kalau SMA1, dia akan kenali 5-3 CCC GGG. Okay, uh, ikut R1, cara dia potong adalah dia akan potong antara G dengan A menyebabkan penghasilan macam ni. Okay. Uh, dia punya DNA itu akan terpotong dalam bentuk gerigi okay. uh, so ini kita panggil sebagai sticky end ataupun staggered cut okay. uh, potongan bergerigi okay. kalau semua 1 dia akan potong antara C dengan G okay. saya so, akan potong dekat sini lah menyebabkan awak dapat blunt end hujung yang tumpul okay. so sekarang awak dah potong awak punya gene of interest awak keluar daripada awak punya uh, chromosome so now you have already cut your gene of interest out of your of the chromosome okay so you must be thinking that okay so now i can insert the gene of insulin ataupun gene of interest into a host cell okay for example uh open your back out e coli so now of course my e coli will be able to produce insulin okay no okay tak boleh terus masukkan awak punya gene of interest awak tu terus ke dalam awak punya host cell kenapa Okey, ingat lagi tak tadi? Okey, so kita tengok ni, ini adalah apa bakteria. Okey, tengok dekat apa tadi? Kalau bakteria ni dia jumpa sahaja apa uh, punya DNA yang masuk terkontang kanting, dia akan buat apa? Dia akan potong kan? Sebab dia takut itu adalah virus punya DNA. Alright? So jadi apa yang awak kena buat adalah awak kena tipu dia. Awak kena tipu bakteria tersebut. Okey. So what do you do is you take plasmid out from the bacteria. Kemudian awak potong plasmid tu buka. Okay, so menyebabkan plasmid tersebut terbuka. And then you insert your gene of interest into the plasmid. Tak? Okay, menyebabkan plasmid ni tersebut dah menjadi recombinant disebabkan oleh uh, DNA yang terhasil ni. Okay, dia ada um, dua source. Warna biru ni adalah bahagian plasmid asal. Okay, yang datang dari bakteria. Kemudian warna purple ni adalah Uh, DNA ataupun uh, gene daripada human. So, ini kita panggil sebagai recombinant DNA. Combine-combine lah macam campur. Okay, daripada dua sos yang berbeza. Okay, so sekarang awak punya gene of interest ni dah masuk dekat dalam awak punya plasmid. Kemudian awak masukkan plasmid awak ni dekat dalam awak punya bakteria cell. Okay, so bakteria bila dia dapat plasmid tersebut dia tertipu. Oh, ini plasmid. Memang biasanya aku pun ada plasmid. So, simpan je lah. Tak payah nak dipotong. Nah, so now your gene of interest selamat, okay? Tidak dipotong-potong, okay? So that, so, um, okay? So tools yang ketiga yang awak perlukan adalah, okay? Adalah vector, okay? Uh, so vector untuk uh, membawa masuk, okay? So uh, vector itu adalah uh, DNA molecule that carry gene of interest into a host cell. Okay, alright, so kita ada beberapa jenis vektor, okay, macam apa yang nampak dekat sini, okay, different vektor, dia dia boleh bawa 
um, jade of interest awak uh, dalam saiz-saiz yang berbeza lah. Okay, so katakanlah um, awak nak simpan, contoh dia contoh. Okay, kalau awak nak simpan uh, beratus-ratus movie, takkan awak nak uh, apa namanya, pakai uh, thumb drive kan? Uh, awak mesti pakai hard disk tu tidak. Sebab hard disk biasanya boleh boleh simpan saiz yang lebih besar. Uh, begitulah dengan awak punya vector. Different vector boleh bawa jin of interest yang berbeza saiz. Uh, macam ni. Okay. Okay, so we have several characteristics of a good vector. So a good vector must possess multiple cloning site. So multiple cloning site tu maksudnya lah tempat dia boleh potong buka. Okay, kalau dia tak ada tempat potong buka ni, macam mana awak nak masukkan target gene? So, tidak? so itu maksud multiple cloning site. Okay, so good vector mesti boleh dibuka dekat dia punya multiple cloning site. Baru boleh buka macam ni. Bila boleh buka, baru boleh masukkan awak punya target gene dekat sini. Ya, okay. Possess selectable markers yang tu nanti kita akan tengok and then possess origin of replication. Kita bacakan dalam DNA replication. Okay, so kalau lah plasmid ni tak ada origin of replication, macam mana? Uh, bila awak punya E. coli tersebut nak membahagi, anak dia tak dapat. Okay, anak dia tak dapat. So, jadi awak punya target ni, awak punya target gene ni tinggal satu je lah. Kekal satu je tak dapat diperbanyakkan. Okay, uh, rugi. Okay, guys, now we have a little bit of a problem. Okay, so we have already cut our target gene out of the original chromosome by using a particular um, restriction enzyme. And we have also used the same restriction enzyme to cut our plasmid open. So, because of are we using um, the same uh, restriction enzyme to cut our target gene and also to cut our plasmid, now we have complementary sticky ends okay so that's why we have to cut uh, our target gene out uh, from the chromosome and also we have to cut our plasmid open by using the same restriction enzyme okay so that we get complementary uh, sticky ends all right now so dia melekat dekat sini disebabkan oleh sticky end tersebut tetapi dia tidak menjadi uh, belum lagi menjadi satu Uh, DNA molecule yang uh, bersambung. Nampak tak? Dia masih lagi belum bersambung. Okay. Alright. So, we need to some, we need to um, combine them. Okay. We need to combine them. So, kita kena tutup ni. Kita kena lekatkan yang ini. Okay. So, we need another tool. So, what tool do we need? How do we combine the gene of interest with vector? Okay. To form one molecule. So, kita kena pakai DNA ligase. Kita cantum-cantum lah. Yang ni kita dah belajar kan masa DNA replication. Okay. DNA ligase dia akan cantum Okazaki fragments. Dia akan cantum fragment. So, ini kan dua fragment yang berbeza kan. Okay. So, kita nak cantumkan dua DNA segment ataupun dua DNA fragment yang berbeza. Mesti pakai DNA ligase. Okay. Alright. Very, very good. So, ni awak punya... Uh, um, tool yang terakhir, ok, so kita dah dapat recombinant DNA sekarang yang lengkap selepas kita dah lekatkan ni menggunakan DNA like this, ok, so kita nak masukkan awak punya recombinant DNA ni di dalam host cell, so itu adalah awak punya uh, tool yang terakhir ok, so host cell, ok, so contoh host cell kita adalah kita punya E. coli dan ini adalah karakteristik-karakteristik of a good host cell, ok, so a good host cell must be able to receive recombinant DNA via transformation process ok, so dia mesti boleh menerima recombinant DNA tersebut. Kalau dia tak boleh nak undergo process transformation, meaning it's not a good host for cell. Tak payahlah pakai macam, tak, tak payahlah pakai dia. Okay? Kita buat transformation, dia tak nak juga ambil. Kita buat transformation, dia tak nak juga ambil recombinant DNA tersebut. Okay? So, susahlah. So, it's not a good host cell. Okay? Yang uh, second characteristic of a good host cell adalah able to maintain the structure of recombinant DNA. So, dia boleh ambil recombinant DNA tersebut. So, bila dia dah ambil, dia simpan. Dia jaga elok-elok. Dia tak degrade. Okay? So, kalau dia boleh ambil, tapi bila dah masuk dekat dalam, recombinant DNA itu uh, dipecah-pecahkan. So, maksudnya host cell tersebut is not a good It's not a good host cell. Okay? Alright. Nombor tiga adalah able to express the gene of interest. Okay? Alright. So, dia mesti pandai ambil, pandai simpan dan juga pandai ex express. Dan yang keempat ni adalah able to amplify the gene product. Maksudnya, kena pandai express dengan banyak-banyak. Kalau setakat seketul-ketul, tak payahlah. Cari host cell yang lain yang boleh produce berlambak-lambak. Okay, awak punya product of gene of interest tersebut. Okay, so itu adalah awak punya karakteristik of a good host cell. Okay, so hari ni kita dah belajar uh, 
tools in recombinant DNA technology kita tengok tools yang pertama adalah gene of interest kita ada restriction enzyme kita ada DNA ligase sebagai modifying enzyme okey kita ada vector dan juga kita ada host cell okey so next kita akan tengok kepada steps in recombinant DNA technology